hello welcome to gys how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so currently friends we have 12 series that focus on your prelims and one series that target your uh, mains so what we do in these prelims oriented series we have basically divided your whole uh, whole syllabus into 12 subtopics and uh, we daily discuss two subtopics and in this manner in 6 days we cover all your subtopics uh, or 12 subtopics and uh, this process goes on and on in a cyclic manner and this will continue till 31st may so why the date chosen has been 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims of upsc csc 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam so let's start a discussion on environment so like uh, uh, today is we doing we are doing lecture number 55 of environment so let's see what the questions of it first which of these states had proposed large public spending in order to find the miraculous herb sanjeevni that finds mention in indian mythology and indian traditional medicinal system so friends uh, nearly one, uh, one year back uh, uh, i think uh, one, one to two year back uh, our state government had uh, proposed uh, uh, a large spending on uh, to find the sanjeevni that was that was that was uh, 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 that, that is that is found in indian mythology so which of these uh, following states had uh, uh, proposed this large spending a uttarakhand b jammu kashmir c himachal pradesh d assam let me tell you friends that the answer is a uttarakhand so uttarakhand uh, had decided to spend rupees 20 5 crore on on the discovery of this mirac miraculous uh, sanjeevni herb so the answer is a so the the legend is like uh, uh, lord hanuman arrived in himalayas to gather this life saving herb but since he could not identify sanjeevni he uprooted a part of mountain and carried it to lanka so uttarakhand government had uh, in 2016 proposed to spend rupees 25 crore in finding this miraculous herb so second question is which of the following chemicals is not associated with depletion of ozone layer So here we have been asked that uh, which of the following chemicals is not as not associated a nitrogen dioxide b methane c chlorine chlorine monoxide b d potassium hydroxide let me tell you friends that the answer is d potassium hydroxide all other uh, uh, chemicals are associated with the uh, depletion of ozone layer that is nitrogen dioxide methane and chlorine mon monoxide so the answer is d that is potassium hydroxide So this is about your explanation part. So there is nothing, there is nothing about it uh, to read. So let's move on to the next question. Next question is consider the following about UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program. First, it is an intergovernmental scientific program that aims to establish a scientific basis for the improvement of relationships between people and their environment. Second, it promotes it promotes greater involvement of science and scientists in policy development concerning the wise use of bi biological diversity. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you, friends, that yes, first statement is correct. Uh, this man and biosphere uh, program was basically to establish it was the aim was to establish a scientific basis for the improvement of relationship between people and their environments and uh, it it promotes greater involvement of science and scientists in policy development con uh, development concerning the wise use of uh, wise use of biological diversity so both one and two are correct so the answer is a So here is the explanation. So Man and Biosphere program was launched in 1970. So uh, in UNESCO Biosphere Conference in 1968, uh, there were a number of countries uh, that uh, member countries uh, which which uh, which thought it necessary uh, to consider what could should be done to uh, to to avoid the threats that our biosphere is facing. So that's why this program was launched. And under it, a world network of biosphere reserves is identified, and also other programs are run by this uh, uh, Man and uh, Biosphere program. Uh, Uh, sorry unesco and uh, they they are different uh, they are like uh, uh, great apes survival so this man and biosphere uh, has further uh, projects under it so the main objective is to minimize the loss of biological diversity and to make people aware of how cultural and biological diversity affect each other and to promote environmental sustainability through the world network of biosphere reserves So this is about your this question. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is fourth question. Fourth question is consider the following about the historic Gali Amendment 2016. First, it aims to phase out chlorofluorocarbons completely by 2030. Second, it puts a legally binding voluntary carbon dioxide emission reduction targets on COP member states. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you, friends, that both these statements are incorrect. The Gali Amendment 2016 was an amendment to the Montreal Protocol. So Montreal, what was Montreal? 
Montreal Protocol. Montreal Protocol was controlling the emission of those gases that were depleting the ozone. So they were kind of uh, like chlorofluorocarbons. But now uh, this Kigali Amendment was moved in 2016 to the Montreal Protocol and it now included hydrofluorocarbons. So certainly it is not a chlorofluorocarbon, it is hydrofluorocarbon. Kigali Amendment is associated with hydrofluorocarbon because the chlorofluorocarbon production has already been reduced uh, under, under Montreal Protocol and uh, it uh, there is no no legally binding such thing uh, to on, on, on conference of party member states because this COP is different but yes there is a legal binding uh, uh, legally binding uh, kind of uh, 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 we can say that uh, this was a kind it is a kind of obligation legally binding obligation is there but certainly it is not related to COP because COP is a different thing and Kigali amendment is a different thing so basically all the countries have uh, agreed to reduce the production of hydrofluorocarbons by 85% from their their baseline production and by by 2045 so both the uh, statements are incorrect so the solution is D that is none so here is the explanation as I have already told you that uh, 197 countries including India have agreed to to a timeline to reduce the use of hydrofluorocarbons by roughly 85% of their baselines by 2045. Uh, so this this is uh, this conference of parties is different thing from this and hydrofluorocarbon is uh, also a greenhouse gas and it is primarily used in uh, refrigerators refrigerants and this car and air conditioners and air sprays. So they are currently world's fastest produce they produced greenhouse gas with emissions increasing by up to 10% each year. So let's move on to the next question. Next question is what are chemical smog generally forms in? A. Cold and moist conditions. B. Warm, dry and sunny climate. C. Low lying from mountain valleys. D. Regions where ice fall is predominant. So we have to choose that where this generally forms. So let me tell you friends uh, that uh, this photochemical uh, smoke forms in regions that are warm and that are dry and they're, they're, where the climate is sunny. So so uh, they, the, it, they basically photochemical slow smoke forms when your sunlight reacts with hydrocarbons and nitri nitric oxide that are released into atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels for example uh, emission from the vehicle so the answer is B solution is B so here is the explanation so it results from the action of sunlight on unsaturated hydrocarbons and nitrogen dioxides produced by automobiles and factories so photochemical smoke has high concentration of oxidizing agents and is therefore called as oxidizing smoke so the common components are like ozone, nitric oxide, acrolein, formaldehyde, and peroxyacetyl nitrate. Let's move on to the next question. Next question is sixth question. The black buck generally inhabits a grassy plains and thinly forested areas, b dense evergreen forests, c low lying coastal mangroves, d frigid Himalayan regions at high elevation. Let me tell you friends that the answer is a that is grassy plains and thinly forested areas. They are basically mainly uh, 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 inhabited by black buck. So it is mainly seen in northwestern part of India so it is not uh, it is not uh, uh, the cold climate is not suitable to it so it it, it is found in in warm climates like in desert and uh, your grassy plains uh, and also that that uh, and also in in regions like coastal areas so the answer is a so black buck can be found in deserts and coastal areas in mountains so they prefer areas where perennial water sources are available so this is about your sixth question. Let's move on to the seventh question. Seventh question is consider the following about system of air quality and weather forecasting and, uh, and research. That is SAFA. First, it was uh, introduced by Union Ministry of Earth Sciences, Earth Sciences for Greater Metropolitan Cities of India. Second, the major objective of SAFA project is to increase awareness among general public regarding the air quality. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct because it was introduced by Union Ministry of Earth Sciences. Please note it. The student may get confused uh, they, they 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 might get uh, they might th think that uh, that it could come under the ministry of Inma uh, environment forest and climate change but let me tell you friends that uh, matter is related to forecasting so certainly it is uh, under the union ministry of earth sciences and the main objective of the suffer project is to increase awareness among general public regarding the air quality by displaying the standards of certain metropolitan uh, cities uh, the, the quality of air quality uh, the air quality stand uh, kind of status in different metropolitan big metropolitan cities so the answer is both one and two are correct so it is basically for it, it was launched for greater metropolitan cities of india to provide location specific information on air quality in real time so according to system of air quality and uh, weather forecasting and research uh, national capitals air quality was recorded very poor so 
so main reasons were basically the cold weather conditions with very light wind uh, light wind vehicular pollution farm fires in neighboring states of punjab and haryana let's move on to the next question eighth question eighth question is rainbow revolution is an integral development program of agriculture which include a fisheries b horticulture c forestry d all of the above let me tell you friends that rainbow the, you might know that it, in rainbow there are multiple colors so rainbow is uh, rainbow revolution is ad, uh, uh, associated with all of these that is solution is d so it includes uh, uh, horticulture forestry sugar cane fishery pol poultry animal husbandry and food processing industry so rainbow Re uh, revolution indicates green revolution that of food grains and white revolution that of milk and yellow revolution of oil seeds and blue revolution of fisheries and golden revolution of fruits and silver revolution of eggs and round revolution of potato pink revolution meat and uh, gray revolution fertilizer so agriculture is now poised for a rainbow revolution fueled by technology and due growth in horticulture livestock and fish fishing sectors let's move on to the ninth question ninth question is consider the following about protection of plant varieties and farmers uh, rights authority india first it was established in pursuance of broad provisions of trips that is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights second it grants approval for conducting genetic research and clearing genetic patents which use biodiversity of india so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends only one one first statement is correct that it was established in pursuance of broad provisions of trade related aspects of intellectual property rights uh, this second thing is not done by this uh, this authority because uh, the the approval for conducting gen genetic research and granting the genetic patents is 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 done by your national biodiversity authority and not by this uh, uh, protection of plant varieties and farmers rights authority so this was established in uh, pursuance of broad, broad provisions only one is correct so a would be the answer so here is the explanation so this uh, uh, genetic uh, research is uh, kind of approved and uh, further uh, to, to, to to conduct the genetic research is uh, or using biodiversity of india is authorized by national biodiversity act the this uh, this this plant variety uh, uh, protection of plant varieties uh, authority is it has it is basically to provide established to provide for the establishment of an effective system for protection of plant varieties the rights of farmers and plant breeders and encourage the development of new varieties of plants let's move on to the next like uh, next question uh, next question is 10th that is consider the following about the kashmiri red stag first it is generally found in dense riverine forests in the high valleys and mountains second it is protected by Mo bombay natural history society as their flagship species uh, let me tell you friends that uh, kashmiri red stag uh, red stag is also known as hangul so it is it, be, it is basically found in uh, dense riverine forest in high valleys and mountains of kashmir and uh, and this uh, chamba chamba area of uh, himachal pradesh and uh, let me tell you friends that uh, second statement is incorrect because bombay natural history society doesn't protect it as a flagship species but an important point about this kashmiri red stag is that it is listed under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act and also it is one of the 15 uh, priority priority species uh, uh, priority species that that are to be conserved and it is critically endangered as per the iucn red list so only one is correct so the answer is a so here is the explanation so it is it is also known as hangul and uh, it, it belongs to the it is part of asian clade of elk and it is found in dense riverine forests and high valleys and mountains of kashmir valley and northern chamba district of himachal pradesh so there are only few uh, now 150 of them survive with its last bastion in uh, bastion in dachigam national park that is in uh, jnk so uh, we but we uh, this bombay natural history society has not uh, declared it uh, it, it uh, as uh, the, their uh, not declared it as their flagship species so next is they are listed under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act and jnk uh, wildlife protection act 1978 and it had been, had been it has been listed among the top 15 species of high conservation priority by the central government so the main reasons are habitat destruction over grazing by domestic livestock and poaching and it is now listed as critically endangered under the iucn list that is international union for conservation of nature so this is all about friends today's lecture if you like the questions if you like the video then please do hit a like do subscribe to our channel and also ensure that you press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications about the updates that we do on our channel and lastly friends if you want to get the pdfs of these mcqs you can contact us at this telegram uh, so at this uh, email id that is chyes21 at the rate gmail.com or for that matter this contact number that is 89604264814 so certainly there will be a minimum cost for the uh, for the pdf subscription which we have kept for the purpose of our motivation so that we can also sustain ourselves to help you people and uh, friends why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not 
not be able to see 15 to 20 minute long video or for, for that matter you can't be able to revise multiple topics from the standard books or by reading NCRTs that, that at that time you must have some kind of notes to revise your basic concepts quickly so that you can you can revise your uh, your syllabus multiple times so these PDFs are designed in a manner so as you have seen the explanation is provided so all basic uh, concepts are covered and it is also told that why a particular option is correct and why a particular option is not correct so in this case in this in this uh, way you cover four uh, four concepts in one question and this this helps you uh, this will help you in a great degree for as, uh, in revision as well as in uh, your practice so if you wish to subscribe to them you can contact us at this email like this that is gys21 at the gmail.com or at this contact number so thank you friends have a very nice day thank you very